And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. Happy New Year to all, and what a great way to start the new year with a story that's really uplifting at this point. Started out tragically and looks like it's going to end up on a pretty high note. And I'm referring, of course, to the situation involving DeMar Hamlin, the young NFL star who was critically injured in the game between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. And if you watch what happened in that moment, virtually every player dropped to his knees in prayer over this young man who lay gravely, gravely, gravely injured on the field. And folks say that if the EMS and paramedics and medical team that attended him immediately hadn't done so, he probably would have lost his life. But yesterday we got news that he's off the ventilator, communicating with his family. Of course, his first question was, did we win the game? And the doctor appropriately said to him, you won the game of life. And his family said when they were uh, hearing that the medical staff had saved his life, they were very, very grateful. Obviously, they said the prayers saved his life. This young man is a devout Christian, a really wonderful guy. My son had the privilege of playing against him in high school. He's a Pennsylvania native, and my local team, Cumberland Valley, played Pittsburgh Central Catholic in the state semifinals his senior year, and so they had a chance to play against each other. And we've learned through the years what a really wonderful young guy this man is, and we're hopeful for his full recovery, but in some ways, that isn't really the story here. It's a story of miracles brought together by people joined in prayer, all doing the right thing. And meanwhile, back on the political front, there are battles all over the place for leadership positions in state legislatures and, of course, in the Congress of the United States. In my home state of Pennsylvania, we had a really unusual situation where the Democrats had a theoretical majority because they had won the most seats on Election Day, but because of the death and two resignations, the Republicans had the mathematical majority. And the question, of course, was who's going to control that chamber? Ultimately, there was a deal made that allowed a Democrat by registration who now says he is independent to become speaker. So the question is, how long is that going to be the situation? And what were the particulars of this deal? Because Howie Mandel, if this were deal or no deal, would be asking, did you make a good deal, a great deal, or a lousy deal? And in my judgment, if this is a long-term situation, the Republicans made a very good deal. If it's not, you'd have to see what the other particulars of the deal were before you make a conclusive decision. But a lot of things remain to be seen there as well. And of course, in Washington, D.C., we have a historic situation, the first time in a century when the balloting for Speaker of the House has gone beyond a single ballot. Usually it's done with virtual unanimity on one side of the aisle, but this time, not so much. A group of dissident Republicans has blocked the election of Kevin McCarthy as Speaker for the entire week. Look like they might get it over the goal line on the 13th lucky 13 ballot, but they didn't. It now appears that many members of the Freedom Caucus are going over to McCarthy. There's only a couple of holdouts, and it looks like the logjam will finally get broken. But when I was asked by the media earlier this week what I thought, I quoted Will Rogers, who once said, I'm not a member of an organized political party. I'm a Democrat. I said he might as well have said this time around, I'm a congressional Republican. Ultimately, I think conservatives across the country, conservative voters and activists, want to see the Republicans in Congress united and working together on the issues on which we all agree and which are best for the country. And the procedural stuff and the personal problems that members might have with one another need to take a backseat to getting things done for the American people. And finally, it is that time of year, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, the greatest show on earth, the Pennsylvania Farm Show starts today, a week-long fiesta of honoring Pennsylvania's number one industry, agriculture, the largest indoor agriculture exposition in the country, and a great time for all. So I'm hoping to be out there a lot this week, and I'm hoping to see many of you at the Pennsylvania Farm Show. And finally, on a more serious note, all of us join in prayer for our United States Senator from Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, who announced this week that he's been diagnosed with prostate cancer and will undergo surgery to take care of that. He's told that he has a good prognosis. We hope that's the case. And we all pray for him because 
It really is the power of prayer that takes us all forward. And for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.